Hi, I'm Scott Bainbridge. I'm an interventional physiatrist and a founder of Denver Back Pain Specialists. Jeanette is one of our key employees and she's going to help me demonstrate a cervical and upper extremity examination. And generally I will start with cervical motion. Go ahead and bend your head forward. And I'll ask that they let us know, let me know, if there's any discomfort, even mild, any tingling, any symptoms at all. So I'm looking for perhaps if there's a cervical central disc herniation, pain into the upper back, that type of thing. Any tingling, I'll note that. Go ahead and bend back. Is there a stenosis that's worse with extension, creating neurological radicular symptoms? Is there a focal facet area of pain? Come on up, bend to the side. This closes the foramina, it stresses the facet joints, it even tugs a little bit on the contralateral roots, and we'll do both sides of that, turn this way, and again, stressing the joints, and tilt back, a quadrant maneuver. I don't do a formal spur lens. I don't, I think that's too much to push down, but just getting into this position may elicit ridiculous symptoms or focal facet pattern pain, and we'll do that both sides. Go ahead and relax. Then I'll start looking at some of the entrapment neuropathy testing that we do. For instance, tunnels over the carpal tunnel. Is the, is, does it elicit tingling? Guyens canal over the ulnar nerve. Ulnar nerve at the ulnar groove at the elbow. Just distal and medial. And so I'll go from cubital tunnel all the way up into the distal upper arm. Also, just hyperflex, see if there's any subluxation of the ulnar nerve. And we'll do some static testing. I'll have them assume a phalens test position and hold that. Does that elicit any tingling or other symptoms or local pain? Looking for carpal tunnel syndrome. Uh, reverse phalens, we can do elbow flexion testing. So go ahead up here. And again, this is tenting the ulnar nerve. Does it elicit symptoms? We tend to do this when we sleep, and we do this when we sleep. So, you know, they're, they're good tests to do to uh, check in to those things. All right, thoracic outlet syndrome testing. I don't always do it, but when indicated, go ahead and look that way. This is Wright's maneuver. I'm feeling for the pulse to see if it goes away. I'm palpating over pec minor, anterior scalenes, plexus, and does this elicit any tingling or other painful sensations? Relax down. Then I'll get into my neurological exam. So I'll start with biceps reflex testing. When, we, when I reflex test, I use a very loose motion, stretch, put a little stretch on that biceps tendon, and Go ahead and check that, C5-6, brachioradialis. I put my thumb over that and actually strike my thumb so I'm not striking the superficial radial sensory nerve. That doesn't feel good. C6, triceps reflex. I'm coming just proximal to the olecranon process. And relax here. There we go. And try and get that. With the relaxation, you can do it this way as well. I know you can't see that, but I'm striking the same area. And then with my next screening first exam, I will also check patellar and Achilles reflexes, just to make sure that there aren't any brisk reflexes that would point to a possible upper motor neuron lesion, perhaps with a cervical myelopathy. Same with plantar responses and clonus testing. And I'll get into sensory examination. So I often start and I'll say, tell me if there's any difference from side to side when I test, any dullness, hypersensitivity. I'll look at this police patch area, axillary nerve C5, and I'll do both sides. Up here, more a C4 area. Down in this dorsal radial aspect of the hand, radial sensory nerve, C6 or 7, it's a crossover area. And I'll have them put your palms up, and I'll go side to side. I'll look at the thumb, which is C6 largely, median nerve, 
median nerve for the index finger, a crossover of C6 or 7. C7 to the middle finger, still in that median sensory distribution. C7-8 crossover. Also, the fourth digit is a crossover of median sensory and ulnar sensory. The little finger, fifth digit, is C8 ulnar. We can get up into a little T1 up in here. And I'll go on to strength testing. Arms up like this, push up against me. And I'm looking at C5, C6, arms out like this. Then we have the biceps, C5, 6, pull. Now push out against me. Triceps, C7 largely, some 6 and 8. Bring your wrists back towards you. Wrist extension is radial nerve, but it's C6 largely, some C7. Pull back. Good. Now put your fingers straight out like that. Lift up with the fingers. Still radial nerve, but this is more C7 oriented. Spread your fingers. Don't let me squeeze them together. And I always generally test these both at one time, but I'll test one. Don't let me squeeze them together. Older nerve, C8, T1. Squeeze my fingers real hard. All right, so you've got uh, some median ulnar long finger flexors, but this is a C8, largely a C8 function. Hold your palm up, thumb straight up in the air, and I'll step around and come from this direction. So I'll say, don't let me move your thumb. I'm coming from this direction. Abductor pollicis brevis, median nerve, C8, T1. So I've done that. I like to look at hip flexor at least. I'll do it lower extremities in their entirety usually, but bring that knee up against me. Again, upper motor neuron pattern weakness will often show up in the hip flexors. So go ahead and step down. And let me jump behind here. This, And I'll do an inspection and palpation part of the exam, looking for asymmetry. I palpate starting at upper cervical, occipital ridge area. Um, you can get on the lesser and greater occipital nerves, the upper cervical musculature. Walk down, out into the upper traps, levator scapula, medial scapular muscles, including the middle trap and rhomboid major muscles, and palpate out. I may do a shoulder exam if indicated. <clears throat> I may come forward and look at that upper rib, anterior scalene area, uh, pec minors from behind, that type of thing. All right, and that I think is a pretty thorough start to an exam. And so if you're in the primary care setting, you don't have a lot of time, that is a, is a pretty good exam. And once you've done it many times, it becomes very um, quick and efficient for you as well. And thanks, Jeanette.